rest of my life. Just love me for the rest of mine. Please, you have to believe me. I loved her. What does it feel like to get away with murder? Let's have the God to save your soul. I should ask the devil to punish you ever killed her. You know, you don't have to convince me. I believe you. Why are you protecting me? Because if I did anything to her, then I'm a monster. So I didn't have any uh, reservations about the the darkness of the of the movie. You know, I've done. Um, I, I seem to be kind of. You know, even Harry Potter had quite a lot of darkness in it, and I. I no. <laughs> And we're on. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, and you know, doing things like Equus and the Cripple of Inish Man and things. I'm, I'm, I've all, you know, I like Anthony Darlings. You know, I, I really, I like getting involved in that, in that kind of stuff. And in terms of the challenges for the movie, you know, it's, um, it's a challenging part. And there's, you know, there's a lot to kind of mine in terms of his, uh, you know, his, what he has gone through prior to the beginning of the film. Even and then, you know, as he's going through it, I sort of, you know, break down the script in the way that I would approach anything and then and then you have the sort of more uh, superficial but a lot of fun challenges of you know the prosthetics and, and stuff which is mainly a challenge of just staying still for me so I don't yeah it's obviously an amazing book and, and the adaptation of the, the book into a script was fantastic I like things that um, you know take uh, an idea that sort of everyone can relate to in some way, and not necessarily that you know being accused of murdering your girlfriend, but the, <laughs> but the idea that you know of being an outsider and of loneliness and of coping with loss and finding a really original, crazy way to deal with that topic. Um, you know, it's people want to um, talk about this film as being um, fantasy or horror and lots of things, but I, you know, I I always seen it as being kind of sort of, uh, and you feel free to disagree as the author of the book, but, um, but as, as magical realism in the sense that there's, uh, most of the world is very, very grounded in reality apart from this one fantastical thing that is happening in the middle of it. I think the story is less about, you know, uh, a murder mystery, um, you know, less of a whodunit and, and, you know, more of a sort of thought problem. What would it be like to know the worst in the people you love, you know, to hear, to be faced with their worst, their worst secrets, their ugliest, their ugliest secrets and ugliest temptations. What would that do to you? Um, could you hold on to your decency? Could you still love them? Um, and in the course of the story, Ig suffers a lot from the things he learns about the people who, around him. Um, he endures a lot of punishment. Um, but I do think that it's, decency is resilient. Um, and that, that, you know, one of the things, even though the film and the, the story are pretty, take, take us to some pretty dark places, I do think there's a suggestion there that, that you can love people even when you know their worst, and, and maybe not in spite of, but because of, um, because of their flaws. So I think that's sort of hopeful. Yeah, you were talking about the, the demonic new personality, but in fact it's not changing himself. He's like, you know, physically transforming into the devil, but he stayed the only character that stayed himself through, mm. the whole, through the whole movie, you know, and that's very interesting because it's the world around him that turned into hell and not himself. And that's really about that trip through, you know, through the fire that like, I mean, I think was really interesting for the character. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with obviously everything the guys have said. Um, for me, there is always something you know more interesting about a part that is you know multifaceted and, and has a dark side and it's more true to life even in this you know very heightened world that we're sort of in in the film you know you can you can't you know he's a true anti-hero in that he, he he is absolutely good and you should root for him and you should you know be with him all the way but he that's not to say he doesn't do some you know questionable things but even he questions them you know it's mm. not it's not consequenceless it's it sort of you know, Inconsequential, inconsequential, something, um, and it's it's not without consequence, and um, and you know as as he as he says he, he learns from that so that you know he can be in some sense redeemed by the end. You, you know, I just want to throw out there, you know, one thing that you see in a lot of film today is you know movies and stories that really only take you to one place, that really only do one thing. Horror movies that are only just scary and. You know, action films that that are only about buildings exploding, and and um, it's interesting to me that you know, in the course of the novel, Ig experiences a lot emotionally. Um, you know, grief, 
rage, despair, um, delight, madness. Um, and, and the film took him to all those places and sort of refused to just stay in one box. And, and the other thing that I'd say is that is kind of amazing is this is, you know, it covers this huge emotional landscape in the course of the book. And, and Dan went to all those places in the, in the course of his performance and made it look easy. And, and I always think whenever you see someone, an artist do something difficult and make it look effortless, you're seeing the result of someone who's worked very, very hard, um, harder than the people around him. Um, so we've been, we, I, I count us very lucky that, that Dan decided he wanted to take on the part. Um, it's a big reason why I think the film is, you know, is successful. Yeah, I completely agree. Thank you very much. Well, um, I actually think, you know, I, I should maybe refer this to Alex just because he, you know, he was the person that gave the, the notes on how, you know, he wanted the actors to play that relationship with the horns. Yeah, I mean, really it's, um, the, the, the effect of the horns is very particular in a way that it's somehow you forget about them first. And then you are like you have that rush of like sharing your worst uh, thoughts, what you have the most like inside, and you kind of like seek for the blessing of Hig to say, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's a, it's a, it's somewhat like a, a this kind of a, a reaction. So it's almost like an excitement. That was the note that I was giving to yeah. to the other character. Is like you have to share the worst thing with an excitement. That was like the most thing. It's like you, you're almost happy to reveal those awful things. And then you want to do more. Yeah. Confession is good for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a very, it, it's interesting because the, for me, the, the book and the movie are so intertwined right now that I feel that everything that's in the movie is in the book. <laughs> but that's, that's not the case for that, for that scene. But you know, when we had that on the, in, in the script, it was such an obvious great like manifestation and a great moment for his character being followed by you know for so many days by that press and that reporter to just turn and use the power against them and it was just like a really fun moment and i think you know correct me if i'm wrong but i think dan really enjoyed that a lot yeah i did <laughs> it was there was something kind of lethal about that um, it, it is you're right it's a very very funny sequence and and you know it, it's dark and it's funny and also the music choice at that moment is great and um yeah but it was i, I got no small pleasure out of doing that scene <laughs> the you know um whenever a scene is exciting it's always because there's a little explosion of awesome somewhere in the middle of that scene and that explosion always has to come from character um, you can't stick it in with CGI, um, it's not a trick of lighting, um, you can't do it with editing, you know, it has to come organically out of, out of character. I mean, it, you know, 180 degrees different, completely different kind of film, but you know, if you look at the Avengers and Joss Whedon's work, when you think about the great moments in the Avengers, it's never about someone hitting someone, it's always about someone saying something. They say something and you go, oh my God, that's awesome. That's what I, I, I didn't know they would say that, but that's awesome. And that's the moment, that's what you, in any good piece of work, you know, I think that's what you look for is a chance for the character to be so fully themselves that the audience gets excited and says, I love this. I really cannot say enough nice things about Alex, um, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, the, the story I'll tell you that just exemplifies why he is so brilliant is that at the end of the at the end of the film, um, after we finished the last shot, myself and the script supervisor and some of the grips and some of the camera guys all stood around for an hour talking about what a pleasure it had been to work for him. And you know, you might get that from actors sometimes. That is very rare to happen across the crew. And I think one of the things, the reasons for that is that some directors walk onto set with an attitude that they are the only person with the creative impulse and they are the only artist on that set. And Immediately, if a crew feels that, because a film crew is a, a group of incredibly talented, technically skilled people in, every, in many different, um, uh, you know, with many different roles, and uh, they, if you, if you, if they know they're being listened to and that they are being collaborated with rather than just told what to do, it it inspires me and them, and and it made it a pleasure to come to work every day. Also, because you knew 
he was going to do something. He was going to create one of those awesome moments, and and it was a pleasure to be a part of his vision every day. It really, yeah, was. Potter and a few, you know, Lord of the Rings came out at the same time initially, and you know, a few other famous book to movie transitions. I think have adjusted people to the the idea that you know, as wonderful as all books are, and as much as we'd like to put everything in, things do have to slide around and move and, and shift slightly. Um, but I think, you know, the tone of the film remained absolutely true to the tone of the book, and just building off what, uh, what Joe said earlier about it being so many different genres and styles, I do think some, some filmmakers would have come to that and just gone, okay, well, you know, for the sake of ease, I will just make it a horror. Or not that you would have ever allowed yeah. that joke, but, um, but, you know, just make it a horror and take out the comedy or take out the romance or something like that to make it sort of simpler. And, you know, Alex never shied away from any of that. And I think, um, you know, I, I leave it to you to talk about the adaptation then. Yeah, that was the most exciting part of making this movie was to respect the emotion I had you know, reading the book was really to be sure that we were going through that full spectrum of different genre and tone and keep them and make them like exist together in a very organic way. That was like my goal and the challenge of making this movie. I, th I, think, I think the movie is a lot more fun than the book actually. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, um, we'll put that on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, the genre because anything can happen in it and, and you know that you sort of um, as long as you play by your own rules you can sort of do whatever you like um, but yeah I mean I, it's not an intentional thing that I'm like picking all this really dark work but I, I do yeah I, I guess I, I enjoy it and um, you know there's uh, there's also some, I, it's interesting because people do talk about you know Horns and the Woman in Black and then Victor Frankenstein as, as being things that are sort of all of one genre but actually they are I mean mm. Woman in Black is the most traditional horror film you can sort of get the Horns is the least and 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 um, you know with a, a, a film like Frankenstein it's, it sort of more falls into the kind of uh, like adventure category than anything else. It's, it's a you know it's a really it's a I hope it's going to be a great film. But um, but yeah, so I, I don't I can't explain my attraction to that material, but I don't think it's going to end soon. Well, I, I I agree that that Alexandra made a work of tremendous beauty. You know um, that I, I said a couple times that I don't feel like he just directed a film; he painted one. You know, and it just I remember being on the set. Um, for one day and they were shooting a scene where a kid has to ride a shopping cart in his underwear down this chute and and everything is chaos but sort of beautiful chaos and you know and Alex is sort of everywhere he's behind the camera he's talking to the actors and 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 you know there's a feeling that nothing is controlled and then suddenly he says action and there's this tremendous quiet and I noticed that there were two hills and the Sun was in a perfect notch between the two hills flooding the scene with this creamy, beautiful light. And I thought, wait a minute, did he plan that? <laughs> did, he, did he know the sun was going to be there then? No, he couldn't, but he says he, I talked to him later and he said, he said he did, that he knew that the sun would be down. And, you know, and it's just, I, every, um, every novelist I've ever met says that what they really want to do is direct. Um, I think it takes a particular visual talent and, and also a, an ability to take a beating. Um, because there's a lot of people who will question your choices and to do anything good you have to have the courage of your convictions and you know and Alex brought Alex brought his beautiful eye and his beautiful sensibility and his courage to the film and and that was much to our benefit you know it turned out really well and largely because um, he insisted it had to be good thank you very much mm -hmm. I got an idea how about you guys beat the heck out of each other and the winner gets an exclusive interview with me What's that snake doing around your neck? I made a new friend. Are those horns? Damn right, they're horns. <laughs>